the purchasers are on Facebook. Wow, this is crazy. This can't be happening at all. People aren't perfect. Putting together my videos, doing stuff like this. Hey guys, today I'm joined by a friend of mine, Michael Crane from Lake Geneva, Wisconsin. He is an owner and operator of a small painting company that mainly does cabinet refinishing and some high-end painting. He has basically built his business using content marketing across different platforms. And today we'll get into the details of how, what and why. So let's get into this week's conversation. Hello everybody, welcome back. Today we're speaking with incredible person Michael Crane from Crane Painting LLC. Super funny and interesting guy. I wanted to bring him in and talk about his journey with the social media. Michael, how are you doing buddy? Great, thanks for having me on. My pleasure. So let's start from the very basic question. Uh, how did you get started on social media in general? And what was first? Was it your YouTube channel? Was it Instagram? How did you get involved into this game? Um, so the first thing that I did was uh, Facebook, actually. I started a, a Facebook business page, I think, when I first started my company. I can't remember what year that was. I think it was six or seven years ago now. So that was the first thing. I didn't have much to post. I think I posted a really wasn't a very pretty uh, living room that I did. I think my second post was, you know, oh, I got a new paintbrush. It really wasn't anything real interesting, but uh, just kept posting on there. You know, we would do exteriors back then. So I would post exterior projects. Uh, eventually, it got to the point where it wasn't that long ago, actually. I think the next thing that I did was, so I had a personal Instagram page, but when Facebook bought Instagram, well, I merged my Instagram or my, my Facebook business and my Instagram. So my personal Instagram page became my business page as well. So there's no more personal, everything's business. Um, so it just was what it was. Uh, but from there, uh, we went to YouTube, uh, TikTok we're on now, my, my, awesome uh oldest son cyrus uh he's like dad you gotta check out this video and i'm like i don't want to <laughs> he says you gotta download this app it's it's awesome i was like all right let me see it so we downloaded the app and he's like here and i was like oh you can put music to anything and so you know we started messing around with that and that's just fun um awesome i that's like funny. music so so, so you're you know, a kiddo too your kiddo brought you on TikTok. He did. And like, I just post spraying videos on there and you know, there's like 4,000 followers. Right, right, right. So I first become aware of that, uh, of the TikTok app. I was reading one of the, I was listening to one of the audiobooks, um, Gary Vaynerchuk crushing it. And he was talking about Musical.ly. And I was like, what's this Musical.ly? And I was so curious about one of the things that he talked about he was like you want to hear me speak russian you know download that app and see me dancing or, and singing and i was like that's freaking hilarious let me see that and i was like there, there is no more musically it, it got bought by some other chinese company or whatever and it's tiktok now i'm like i gotta download it yeah it's funny i love it how did the uh, youtube ha youtube thing happen so the YouTube video, again, I think that was like a personal thing that I had started. Um, uh, no, that wasn't personal. I think that was, no, it's under my personal name. So if you're looking for the YouTube, it's under Michael Crane. Um, but I had started posting, I think my first video was a thing for my kids. I, I had, you know, found a frog on a job site and that's my first video, I believe saying, Hey kids, look at this frog. Um, <laughs> but I posted, uh, you know, customer uh, video testimonials on there. And That's then a awesome. couple of little walkthroughs and things like that. And then, you know, I just started posting more things. And eventually we got to, like, tutorials. Um, and so we do, you know, we've done a few of those now as well. Did it get any traction right off the bat? Like, right no, where? Nothing. Absolutely nothing off the bat. It was just, uh, I think I had it for a couple of years uh, before anybody even saw it or or found it no comments nothing there was nothing 
Um, and it Complete was, I, you know, I, I wasn't posting engaging content. I was just like, oh, here's my company. You know, look at it. There was things that would get a couple of views here and there, but it was negligible and I didn't really think about it too much. Um, but, you know, uh, we really started gaining traction once we started, you know, posting tutorials. Let me ask you this question. How much time has had passed before you started noticing any traction, any video appeared on the, uh, in the search results? Because right now, if you Google uh, cabinet refinishing Lake Geneva, Wisconsin, your videos are freaking, I don't know, eight out of 10, all of them are yours, which is incredible. Probably pretty soon after I started actually doing that. It's not something that a lot of people are going after around here. If people are looking for, you know, we're talking about going after my clients. Or if somebody's searching, you know, and they're like, all right, I'm looking for somebody to do this project for me. And if for some reason they're like, well, what's this video? Click. They're going to see my video. Um, I don't think anybody's really doing that around my area. So, you know, if you're not doing that, I would say do that. Um, because I have had a lot of people watch the videos in the last year or two. Um, you know, they What's can the... see the before, the afters. They can watch the entire process if they want. I've had a couple of people do that. What's the population of the town you live in? It's a small town, right? It's very small. It's eight to 10,000 people. Um, we have a large population that comes up during the summer um, from Illinois. So... This is a vacation place, um, and a lot of people have their second homes up here. I'm from Chicago. They have a mm -hmm. summer home here. So, you know, half the year, it's not really populated too much. The other half of the year, you know, you can't drive downtown. And by downtown, it's a very tiny little town, picturesque, mm -hmm. you know, postcard type thing, but it's just traffic. So that's a good thing. Not too much for competition well there there are a lot of painters around here there's a lot of uh there's quite a few um it's just the way it is it's wisconsin <laughs> let's talk about uh marketing what's your relationship with this word do you do you have some sort of a you know professional approach like you think your strategy every day or you just do whatever is common sense and you know you have good luck with it I just post, um, I got to say over the last year, I haven't been posting as much. Um, and, uh, it's taken a little bit of stress off me. Um, I do have to work a little bit harder for jobs. You know, clearly that's what it is. Um, what I found is that uh, a lot of our clients come from Facebook, um, a huge percentage of them, in fact, and they watch us typically for six months to a year some of them up to two years that's a long time before they either finally pull the trigger um you know and have you know their kitchen refinished so it's really a long time to make that you know purchasing decision so it's in my best interest to keep posting gotcha I really don't, you know, I don't really do, I don't do direct mailing. I don't do Facebook ads. Basically, I just have a social media presence. Um, I did BNI, which is a networking group. I did that for a long time. That was mainly just residential painting, though. I don't think I ever got an actual cabinet lead out of that. It was, it was fantastic for me when I first started my company. Uh, I have nothing but high recommendations for you know, checking those out, um, they will keep you busy with, with, uh, with painting. For those of us who are just starting, it's a good thing to uh, start posting as soon as possible because it does take a lot of time for the clients to, to pull the trigger. What about Facebook, Facebook strategies? Like what about, um, what works the best? Do you, do you use live videos? Do you, boost your post you said you don't use advertising at all but the organic reach on facebook as we all know is pretty pretty low nowadays so what's what's your best there is one um it's not really a trick but it is uh, a thing that i've done and that is 
in every city, in every state or wherever it is that you live, mm -hmm. there are going to be dozens, if not hundreds, of buy, sell, and trade groups, garage sale groups, uh, mom groups, call them whatever you want, um, groups where people buy and sell things in, on Facebook. Um, so what I've done is when we finish a project, and I haven't done it in a while, but I'll go ahead and I've joined a whole lot of those groups and I'll go ahead and post my before and after in that group and say, hey, everybody, we're, you know, booking up this month. If you're interested, please contact me here. Thanks. And then post them in all those groups. I don't do it often because I think if you do it too much, it's spammy. Um, but the reach from just say my Facebook page, I could reach, you know, let's say 600 people. Just off of my Facebook page, and that's a lot. Let's say 300 people because I think I have 1,200 or something like that or 1,600. I don't know how many followers right now. Three to 600 people are going to actually see that. If you post it in one of those groups, just in one group, most of those groups have thousands of people in them. Your reach is going to be insane. I posted good old blue cabinet job. You remember that one? That's probably one of one of the most popular pictures ever. It was fant it was beautiful. It was gorgeous. Oh yeah. I posted oh, yeah. it stupidly before I went on vacation into like six groups. It reached like twenty thousand people in a matter wow. of hours. I had forty requests for estimates. Wow. That's crazy. How long ago was it? Was it about a year about a year ago? It's about a year ago. Last? Yep. What's your process? Do you post on your own page and then share it to the groups, or do you post as a group as as a business page directly into the groups? It depends on what kind of group you're in. I do always share it from my business page so that I can see the analytics on my end. Though um, usually gotcha. your personal profile has to share your post to that group, if that makes sense. Gotcha. What's your business model in general look like? Do you work with private clients mainly or do you work with uh general contractors and home builders 50 50 not at all um we will i have one builder that i will work for mm -hmm. um, or one general contractor that i will work for it's a, a a lady by the name of jean she's a fantastic human being uh, she takes care of us if she needs something uh, if i can make it happen i'll make it happen um if she's the only one that I will work for. It's a good personal relationship, right? Absolutely. Have you worked with the builders before? I have. What's your experience? Not that great. My experience is that the margins are so incredibly low uh, that it's not worth my time. Uh, so I know you don't like negative, but unfortunately gotcha. that's been my experience. You don't know when you're going to get paid. There's always callbacks because other trades are damaging finished work. And then you're expected to fix that for free. I just don't want to deal with it. So, um, so there is actually you... one other guy that I, I do um, deal with, Nick. Um, he's a good one. He's a fantastic carpenter. And um, the only thing is, is that he just straight up refers me to the client because he knows I'll take care of him. So. Gotcha. So did you start working with the builders and then you moved towards private clients it was very early on in my uh very early on in business i just realized that the expectation was is that i'd be working for like 20 25 dollars an hour um there was no guarantee of future work or there was you know a lot of work but who knows what you're getting paid are you getting paid was it going to be 30 days out was it going to be 60 days out just, gotcha. you know, uh, you never know what you're going to get. I can definitely agree with you on this one here. Uh, my experience, you know, was pretty much the same. I started working with custom home builders. I can't tell you that, you know, it was bad. With some of the builders that I worked with, it wasn't that great. That's for sure. They were more volume oriented businesses, right? Like, 
you know, the more they sell and build, the better. So they obviously don't really care about your customer service and stuff like that. As long as paint is on the walls, they're happy. And I have to say that the some of the builders that I worked with, they were great. Um, it was in Winnipeg, Manitoba. I really loved the relationship. It was like, you know, working with friends. But I can definitely agree, agree with you that the margins are, you know, not there. It's super it's super hard to scale with that model of of business. I mean, if your guys are making a mistake, that's it. The whole thing is screwed. So you either have to be there the whole time or you just have to hope for, you know, for the better that your guys are not going to be making any mistakes and things things go smooth all the time. Yeah, that was tough, but um uh, I would probably say that I moved towards this uh, B2C business just because, you know, I really like the connection with the clients. I mean, I just like, you know, dealing with people and uh, it's it's always nice to know more good people, you know, have good relationship with different people because you never know, you know, who your client is, right? It's 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 crazy. And also the, the leverage. Now you have all the leverage. If your builder is not a very good guy or a company, right? You're now not a part of that system. You are who you are. If you're a great person, if you're a great human being, then that's who you are. This is your legacy. This is your reputation. And that feels incredible. Definitely, definitely agree with you on that. I have to preface this that I've always been pretty customer centric. Customer service has always been something that I've been around or dealing with. You know, I've, I've always been good at it. It's my kind of my forte. Um, when I first started out, I sucked. So I'm not even gonna lie, dude. I wasn't a great painter. So when I first started, man, I when I first started painting, I was awful. I didn't know what I was doing. I picked up a brush and I was like, anybody can paint, you know. And so my experiences my jadedness about that whole situation is a probably realistically because I didn't know what I was doing at the time. And I've just carried that all these years. Um, I'm sure there are a lot of really great builders and, and contractors. I've just carried that prejudice ever since. And, you know, decided to, you know, because I do focus on customer service so much that I always have and all my different businesses are, you know, you know, different jobs that I've had. Cut out the middleman. So, let's jump over to the uh, to the fun stuff. TikTok. I think it's it's a it's a pandemic. The the TikTok. Everybody is like going crazy. I told my wife about that app about a month ago, maybe a little more. She's like she's on it all the time. She's probably posting three, four videos. They're funny. Cause she's like, she's, you know, she's a weird personality. Like she's, she's crazy. She's a little crazy, which is great. I mean, she's, she's, she's posting a lot of fun stuff and I love it. Sometimes I, you know, catch myself scrolling through, through, through the social media apps and I'm going back to TikTok just, just, just to check if my wife uploaded something else, something new. That's, that's awesome. And one of the, one of the guys that I followed pretty much right right after I downloaded it was Crane Painting LLC. I'm like, what's this dude doing? Like, how is this possible? He's getting thousands of views. One of your videos was one of your refinishing projects. Got like over a thousand views, right? Man, that was crazy. I was like, what's in there? It doesn't make any sense at all, man. Like, I, I don't know what it is. It's all we do is post either spring videos um, or just painting related stuff. But like, I got a video just pulling up frog tape and it has 1.5 million views. That's like, crazy. This is stupid. It doesn't make any sense, but whatever. Um, now, let me ask you a specific question. Do you feel like there is a little bit of a, a connection with your subscribers? Like, do they go back? Did you get any... Did you get into relationship with any of them or it's just numbers? I I can't say on TikTok that I have it all. Older women that'll be like, well, what kind of paint did you use? 
you know, and I'll talk to them like that, mm -hmm. um, that type of process. It's not like Facebook or anything like that. I don't think that it's that in-depth of a connection yet. Or maybe right. I'm just not using it right. That's what I felt as well. I feel like, you know, people go there just to escape. You know, it's it's some short, funny videos. You know, you just scroll through the feed and you kind of have a little laugh and go back to whatever you were doing before. But I don't feel like there's any, you know, any any kind of a strong relationship being built. Yeah, I, I don't really see that happening. Um, but, uh, you know, I'm old. It's not really for me. I wouldn't be there if my son hadn't been like, Dad, download this app and make something funny. So, Whatever. It's a cool editing tool. When you put everything together, yep. Dude, I love music. I it. So we're, I'm always like, dude, you know, we're, I'm always, you know, putting together my videos, doing stuff like this. And I was like, man, I just wish I could use a song. Or, and then now I can. I could use, you know, whatever song. Just a small, tiny chunk of it. But it's like, oh, it makes me feel good. It makes me feel good about my day that I can just put this cool little clip together with some amazing music and, and just do that. And you can use it somewhere else, right? You can post it on your Instagram. It's super, super quick and easy. Yep. And it's, you know, uh, you know, when something has cool music to it, so when somebody's scrolling past it and then, you know, their speaker goes yep. off, if they hear something that they like and they see something that they like, they're definitely going to sit there for longer than if it was just like, oh, what is this? Yeah. I'm with you here. Let's take all of the social media that we have and um, kind of put them on, in order of um, value that you got, that you've been getting out of it, you know, from, from top to bottom. What, what's the first one in terms of getting leads, clients? Facebook's number one. Facebook, 100%. Gotcha. So, one and look, uh, I'll say Facebook and I'll, I'll put this caveat on there. And it's uh, the purchasers are on Facebook. Our, our demographic, our target demographic is on Facebook. So, you agree with uh, Gary Vee here that the old, older folks are scrolling through the feed nice and slow? They are. Yep. So there's that. Um, personally, for me, um, I would say that uh, I would say that YouTube would probably be my next thing. Um, I don't know why I would say that just because I think that it's allowed me to get some really awesome connections with people uh, and helpful uh, connections with people all across the, the country and the world. Um, monetarily, not so much. Um, but uh, there's that. I think Instagram is definitely, you know, Zach Kenny does a half million dollars on Instagram. You know, he's definitely killing it. Um, I did have somebody just contact me on Instagram the other day, uh, you know, for refinishing their kitchen. Um, so I haven't really got much work out of that yet, though. I haven't really. Out of Instagram. Either. Correct. Yep. Gotcha. So Instagram would be number three. Yep. What else? Do we put TikTok? That's just, yeah, I'm just, just for fun. Off on that. It's nothing. Fun. <laughs> yeah. It's just, gotcha. you know, fun, happy videos. Awesome. Awesome. Let's, uh, let's go back to Facebook and talk about our um, ideal client, your ideal client. Do you have something like that? Do you have a portrait of your ideal client? Like, what is it? Let's bring some value to our to our audience. A woman aged thirty five to six. Not really. Not so really. It's that broad. Story. Yeah, I would usually say that it's a little bit older than that. But recently, man, we've we've had younger and younger clients. Um, Interesting. So you, uh, I remember you said that you don't really do any ads. Facebook ads is not your thing. I'll run one a couple of times a year, but nothing really ever gotcha. to do much anything out of it. So, so what I figured until now, it's been a few other things just to you know add to 
to your initial demographics other than age and um, gender i would definitely say that marriage status is the other one pretty much all of my clients and uh, i've talked to other people everybody says that the majority of women that become our clients eventually they are all married they tend to have somebody that supports their financial situation right so that's that's probably the the third thing that i would say works for has been working for me and then um obviously the uh the regional stuff like the uh, the location matters a lot i know exactly where we would like to work and uh where we're not planning to work at all like i know the bad areas i know where people tend to have you know uh, not necessarily lower incomes or but there are certain demographics and i know that this location this town this particular area is not so good for us to work in so i wouldn't want to waste any dollars if we happen to do some ads of course you're spending money you want it to go to the correct person exactly if, if i'm going to spend a couple hundred dollars on a facebook ad i don't want to just spend it on somebody that literally will never even have the possibility of using the service that i'm providing as we're getting closer to the end of the conversation let me ask a few questions about uh, some general questions if you can give some advice to the guys who are just starting what would you say first first second and third thing they should do in order to get great results short term and long term let's say it's not just business if they happen to do you know their own thing if they're you know subcontractors you know or business owners if they started their painting carpentry whatever um what you know what what are the steps that you would do if you if you had to start over again talk to an accountant first thing really so not the marketing well yes definitely do the marketing but first thing first um you know i know me personally i was completely winging it when mm-hmm. i first got into this and i spent a lot of time just like stressfully am i doing this right what am i doing am i you know just make sure you have all your bases covered talk to an accountant get all the things set up that you need to do um just cover that first um okay what's next if you're going to market don't make it an if just do look a lot of people constantine you want to make things perfect yep i i have never look i'm a perfectionist when it comes to uh my work uh People aren't perfect. I'm not a perfect person. You know, my business isn't perfect. I make a lot of jokes. I say things that maybe some people shouldn't say. Or, you know, people are like, why did you say that? Look, that's just the way that I am. Um, Hopefully it's nothing too offensive, but I do censor, you know, the worst of me. (laughs) I'm sure it's not. Yeah, look. If you're thinking about what do I post? No, you know, something's out of whack in my picture. I can't put that up there. Just put it up anyway. Because something is better than nothing. You're never going to have a perfect job site. You're never going to have a perfect job. Something's always going to be a little off. Just say, fuck it, and do it. Okay? Because it doesn't matter. Um, Just put out content. You know, if you look at my first videos, even the videos that I do now, they suck compared to yours you know the sound didn't work i didn't know what i was doing i was just like well we're just gonna do this you know screw it let's just do it and see what happens and you learn what you did wrong and you move forward so exactly well i really like the uh the first thing that you brought up that the process of your prospective client becoming aware of you and then making that decision to buy from you 
usually takes long time. You know, six months in average, that's long time. So what, what if we don't start posting anything today? That means that we're not going to have any sales coming in in six months. That's long time. So that makes me feel like I want to go back to, to the past and start post. You can't do anything about that, but exactly. you can do something but, about tomorrow or today. Exactly. That's for sure. So that's second thing, marketing. Anything else? Refer to second thing. Just keep doing stuff. Um, look, you know, things pop up. Um, talk to people online. You know, you talked about you know feeling alone earlier. Uh, I have met some amazing people all over the world um, just from reaching out online. You know, you're up in Canada right now. I've learned so many things and gotten uh, to talk to so many amazing people and learn tricks and tips and just got some solid, solid life advice and business advice and marketing and um, just from people that I've met online and I've gotten business opportunities from it as well. Always be networking with people. Um, even if it's only online and you know, you're in Alaska and you can't talk to anybody because uh, cool things can happen. Man, that's that's huge. Well, we're sitting right now in a weird time, right? Like, even though we're introverts for the most part, and we, you know, tend to work by ourselves on the job site a lot, but you know, by simply pulling up the the app, you can message, you can talk to, you can, you know, record some voice messages to pretty much anybody in the world, not just in North America, right? It's, yeah, it's amazing. And the business opportunities as well, 100%. But, you know, that feeling that you're not alone makes a huge difference, especially during this time, this weird time, as we say. And and the other thing is, is that if there's somebody that you really admire, um, reach out to them and be like, hey, I, I really admire you. I want to know how you do this thing. Because nine times out of the ten, they'll probably be like, hey, dude, here's how you do it. Um, you know, if they've got, you know, unless it's like one of the Kardashians or something like that, then you're out of luck. And you're probably not listening to this podcast. But um, Who is that person that you reached out to and you were like, wow, this is crazy. This can't be happening at all. Uh, it, any of the fine pants of Europe people. Um, John yeah. Shearer. Yeah. Um, uh, uh, Zach. Kenny from ZK Painting, uh, Philip ZK, uh, all those guys, just awesome. So I couldn't believe that they all, you know, took time out of their day to talk to me. So it's pretty cool. Yeah. I was so I was so pumped when I first, you know, started reaching out to people. Obviously, I you know made a lot of good connections in the past when I was doing, you know to be the subcontracting business in Winnipeg. That's how I got all of my clients, right? I reached out directly via LinkedIn direct messages. But now, as I'm starting my business all over with more of a focus on private clients, just out of curiosity, I don't know, I commented something on um, Gary V's sister's post or something like that, Liz Novello. And I was like, I don't know what I said exactly, but we happened to, you know, have a quick chat. And I was like, no, this is like, this can't be true. Like she just responded to me. And I was like, wow, you know, that access when you know that, you know, obviously Gary Vee has huge following on Instagram on like all over, right? But, you know, you can get that close to pretty much anybody. Obviously we have, you know, like busy people, like all of those great guys, you know, motivational peeps out there, like Tony Robbins or whatever, they want to respond just because they're extremely busy, right? But people who has a little more, you know, time, they will respond because they're like, we're all humans. And that's, it's incredible how much we can do right now with, with the internet and social media. And even this that we're talking right now and you know, sitting in front of each other. And uh, the fact that hopefully this brings some value to, you know, some other people makes me feel incredible. It's just, it's a blessing. I agree. 
man well thanks so much for being on the show i really appreciate it wish you nothing but the best in your business and hopefully we'll talk again all right dude good to see you